Hello, hello everybody and welcome to the LGL officially unofficial cast coverage of the LGL 2020 summer split play or tiebreaker match featuring DFM facing off against the Fukuoka Softbank Hawks Gaming. I'll be your co-host and color commentator Alex otherwise known as Lexico by Master on the internet. Of course, I've got the illustrious co-host and play-by-play -play caster Samuel Initialize Hapgood. Welcome to the cast, sir. Pleasure to be here and mostly awake. Mostly awake. It's uh, 4 a.m. in the morning for us that over in England, <laughs> but nothing will stop us from covering the LGL with it, will it? Nope. I'm, I'm up. I'm ready to go. Uh, I could not be more excited. Well, It'll Sam really cool game. Well, Sam tried to sleep. I didn't even bother because I realized it, it was ridiculous to do that. <laughs> so I've been streaming, playing video games this whole time. But... Oh, dear. Sam, initialize. Hello. We did a podcast only a few hours ago where we gave our thoughts yeah. regarding this tiebreaker, and now I think it's about time that we give a bit of recap in regards to this. So we're going to be seeing Detonation Focus Me face off against the Fukuoka Softbank Hawks Gaming, or just the Hawks as we will go now on. Our predictions for this were similar, but our, the outcome that we came to was slightly different on who we're predicting to win, right? Yes, uh, I favour DFM coming into this one. I believe you ended up siding with the from what I Yes, I did, yeah. But it was only very uh marginally that we got there, and part of the reason for that is just due to how these games play. A part of the game that I think we all agree on, and Nightmare included, I'm happy to include him in this, even if he's later against it. He's got other, he's got other sort of... Uh things to keep an eye on, namely sleeping before his own cast later in the day. <laughs> exactly. But something he would agree with yourself, my, me, um, is that Destination Focus Me, pre-15, are favoured. Yes. I mean, throughout the split, DFM have actually largely had pretty good early stats. They've had <sighs> yeah. good first bird rates, good early gold leads. They're up several thousand gold normally early on. There hits a point around 15 minutes though where things start getting shaky. Yeah, and around that 15 minute mark is where things are pretty good. Moving throughout the game, this is where the Hawks stats start actually coming on. They are favoured in that first Nasher moving throughout the game, as well as first base tower. Like, going yeah. through the game, the Hawks are favoured. So, the way we could look at this in a way is, if the Hawks can sustain themselves against DFM, there's a chance for them. But, if DFM can find their momentum in the first 15 minutes and continue that throughout the game, they're favoured. Is that a fair comparison? I think so. And I think it's also fair to say that if we're seeing what we saw from DFM in week seven, rather mm. than the kind of uh, sloppiness that we saw weeks five and six over that kind of super week period the week before, yes. then that's that potential for DFM to sustain and look cohesive and focused in the later game stages is, is definitely an option. Uh, not that the Hawks have exactly been slouches in the last week or so either. No, and it is really important for us to mention those Hawks because they've had a huge shake-up in their coach, so the behind mm, the scenes. Have. And something that we've been really giving the Hawks credit, since these uh, coaches and like additional staff came in, they've been playing night and day differently, right? Uh... They kind of have, if only in the way they are playing that kind of mid to late game, frankly. They pulled in a couple coaches, namely Zandark and Sweet. Zandark, to anybody who's been following the League of Legends scenes for any extended period of time, is ex-KT Rolsters. And I don't mean over a recent period of time. I mean, mm. he has been there since 2012. Yeah. This guy has seen through some incredible names, I'm talking. Score, Smeb. Uh, Cacao, uh -huh. Rookie. Uh -huh. Some of these names are huh. absolutely huge people. So, some of these people have uh, gotten to the world's final, I believe, right? Oh, one or two may have uh, won a world championship. It's just, 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 uh, just, just not a big deal, not a big deal. And now we've got that kind of talent in the LJR, right? On the Hawks side. Part of this is going to add that unknown entity, which... In our podcast, which will be released tomorrow at uh, 5 p.m. BST, got to plug that here already. You know, <laughs> <laughs> um, that was part of what we think could affect this matchup because Detonation Focus Me, when they can prepare and practice, they've dominated. We saw that in spring playoffs mm. specifically when we had round three, round four. They just dominated V3 and Sengoku, but the Hawks—they're not a known quantity anymore, are they? Initialize. Well. 
No, they're not in some ways. But we've also got to remember mm. that, like, during that time off, they will have been scrimming people. So of the course. question is, with this new lower variance Hawk squad, whether that in itself kind of makes them more known as a quantity or whether just the overall change in play style is enough of a, a wrench in the works to throw DFM off. And I'm not entirely sure which way that will go at this point. No, and there's a few ways it will go. Part of this is going to definitely come down to the pick and ban phase. We're of the opinion mm -hmm. due to head-to-head uh, -head game times that Destination Focus Me will be on blue side, or at least we'll have side so. selection, which is probably the better way to look at it. Not blue side, they have side selection, which actually is far more important because we think a lot of these teams at the moment are favoring red side throughout how the, a lot of pick and bans have been going. And the Hawks currently are one to one with Destination Focus Me in the spring, in the summer split. So that again will affect things. And when these teams have faced off previously, Destination Focus Me in the first time round looks slightly favoured, but the second time round the Hawks were favoured. So it really does raise a lot of questions moving forward, right, Initialize? It does, and part of it has been that we have question dfm's draft through large part of this split they've mm. come up with very narrow win condition comps part of the joy of week seven that was giving us some hope for dfm was. was the fact their drafts looked significantly brighter people were playing the correct kind of champions and they were playing to those champions win conditions um they were also banning correctly which was just a huge thing where i was just like thank you that's how they got beat cga right just that yeah, yeah. for sure and it's been a while since we've seen a DFM on this kind of form. And remember, at the very beginning of Spring Split, teams were having to ban three to four of Seros' champions. Mm. We haven't seen that for a while. And now, actually, we're starting to see a little bit of respect given back to that mid laner again. Yeah, I think we have. Seros has not necessarily had a bad split, but it's been a yeah. quiet one. You know, he's had good DPM numbers up over 500 significantly more than Dasher at this point in time. But again, that hasn't been enough to carry DFM to above a 50% win rate. This has been DFM's worst domestic split ever. Let me reiterate that. Yeah. They have never had a lower than an 80% win rate in the regular season. They have been absurdly dominant throughout their history. They have dropped that down to 50% this time. This is an opportunity for redemption, and part of it may well be out of the likes of Saros coming up with something uh, a little bit out of the blue, a little bit more like his Heimerdinger performance and stuff we've known from years and splits past. Well, it worked in week seven to pull them away from that 43 win percent that was before Insane week seven to, to now back up to 50. So now they're, they're sitting pretty on 50, but as you stated, this is the best team that the LGL has ever witnessed. They are the only team in the world to ever have two perfect splits in a region. No one else has ever done that. DFM have done it twice. And now they're in a tiebreaker match to try and have fourth seed. This is a bit of a fall from grace, but nothing's out of the question as initialize, we're in the pick and ban phase. If you would, sir, take it away. With Pleasure, masked swan. So, we are here to witness Detonation Focus Me versus uh, the Fukuoka Softbank Hawks Gaming in a hell of a tiebreaker match here for the finale of the summer split. Mm. But we've got to run through some rosters as first. It will be DFM on the blue side, and they have got Ebi in the top lane, Steel in the jungle, Seros in mid lane, and of course, Utapon and Gang as their bot laners. Yeah, and for the side of the Hawks, we've got Adamic in the top lane, Tussle in the jungle, Dasher in that mid lane, and the 100-acre bot lane of Honey and Poo. And we've got some bands coming in. Cirrus is Heimerdinger it already been taken away, as well as Gang's Bard. Both picks were pretty instrumental in DFM's dismantling, frankly, of CGA in the final week. On the other side, though, uh, Dasher is a very prolific LeBlanc player. Set's just really powerful right now, and we all know what TF can do to the map, so no surprise there in the ban. I wonder whether the Hawks need to go for this Karma ban here, though, because uh, obviously it's set first pick has been a thing in uh, the LJL. We love to flex that one yeah. five ways to Sunday. But, That's um... something I'm really genuinely surprised that DFM decided to ban here, because... The Hawks haven't mm. played set at all. They've only played it one game, and that was a poo. So it's not the crazy flex pick that it is. Maybe in in drafts and like of scrims, Maybe they've this, been doing. There must that. be some scrim stuff, and uh, of course, it does leave open the volley bear here, which Ebby looked pretty damn good on himself in recent weeks. Still flexible itself, but Karma's been up. 
Yeah, that's... Gotta keep an eye on that. I know Nymera is a huge fan of that pick, generally speaking, so I have to curious see whether the Hawks pick it up here. I'm really surprised this was left open. Uh, Volibear, though, can be split, uh, flexed three ways, so that is at least worthwhile to think about. Um, it can be uh -huh. top, jungle, support... Wow, we're seeing huge priority. No Karma pick still yet. Whoa, okay. And Cyrus's Karma was infamous before Karma got buffed. And this is we're playing on 10.4. Oh, yes. So Cyrus can still play it. And I would not be surprised if Gang could play it. As well as maybe Ebi. It wouldn't pass. Yeah, I would absolutely. not pass that no, past we'll, our historic... And, uh, uh, well, yeah. Behold the Karma hover. I suspect it gets logged in. Of course, the Hawks went towards the Athelios, which Honey has been indexing into... Pretty much since the spring wasn't picked. alongside Tussles, Lisa. No, it was Whoa. the it was the oh. Ezreal. Oh, okay. clearly thinking about picking it here. Yeah, Still yeah. not necessarily off. Remember, Ezreal Karma is something that Dirty. Gang and Utapon have done um, fairly nasty things on in the past. That level one power spike is pretty brutal. Could still go towards the mid lane as well. Flexible indeed for DFM. But and there's those final picks now for Hawks. They've got their bot lane and their jungler locked in, but. Uh, May want to lock in either a support here before that pool gets pinched out or look for a flex pick of themselves. So I've got a huge right, right. problem with how the Hawks have already drafted this. We they, we saw the Volley Bear get drafted. Uh, Volley Bear is great into Lee Sin. Now, there is the idea that Lee Sin is one of the best junglers at the moment. I know several of the LCK... Clid really rates it. Yeah, yeah. Clid relates it very highly. Uh, the problem is, if you're against Volley Bear, it doesn't matter if you're favoured. You're just going to lose half the time because you, you can't duel him, which just means half of the pressure that Lee Sin has isn't there we have got that support pick Aphelios Thresh has always been great um and one of the best lanes I right I love it <laughs> and one of the best lanes into it is actually a Kaiser now that that's already gone because we've already got um uh Utapon playing that Ezreal which he's historic on so not gonna have to worry about that but so far we're seeing some bads coming in Renekton and Zoe already picked away or banned away Oh, yes, they are just trying to get rid of some of that mid lane pool, force Dash into something that maybe Seros can find a bit of a counter pick to, or he can find less pressure on. We know what he likes to do. Renekton is uh, something that Epi has been historically pretty good on. It's been a little bit shaky this split in general. DFM haven't played to Renekton comp win conditions all that well. I know Nomera has Vo VOD reviewed that with a number of other analysts and been concerned by it. Harm Kench band away here, still reckoning that could be a karma mid are the hawks not just towards gang that karma could go we kind of mentioned that already one final ban is going to be the galio okay so that does signify a little bit more that with the galio ban um that this is going to actually be a karma mid um because of the zoe ban and the galio ban now that screams far more uh we want uh, we don't want to have Cyrus countered aggressively we don't want him falling behind even though a karma can rarely fall behind Interesting though, Aramik wants to try it again on this cannon. Last time we saw Aramik on this cannon, he did a pretty good job, but this is a guy who we know doesn't play weak side particularly well. Um, he has been punished in quite a lot of games, frankly, when yeah. he's been left to his own devices on a side lane. Could still end up that way, but it is a very strong team fight champion if he can find his way no. to those Wait, team fights uncontested. No. But Sejuani locked oh. in has been rising in priority across the globe, even if it's uh, not been played all that much in the LJL as yet. Volley Baron Sejuani is a hell of a lot of front line. Why would you? Thinking no, no, no. Going towards the Braum here, it's not a lot of DPS here. It'll be Ezreal and a bit of Karma. Why would you pick Sejuani when you already have a favoured matchup in the jungle and you get to counter pick Aramek? What what are you doing, DFM? You can counter pick his cannon. Like they, there are so many options there, and then you're just going to go, no, we're going to just put so, the cannon versus the volley bear, and then we're gonna have an unfavoured matchup in the jungle. That 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 no, that that's not so good. I will say that I know that a number of the LEC pros really rate Volley Bear into Cannon. They've played that a fair amount. So in terms of the lane matchup, I'm, I'm aware that some of the LEC guys quite like it. As for the jungle, yeah, definitely Lee Sin has the pressure early and can definitely do a lot of damage. But Sejuani is not necessarily the easiest to kill unless you catch her out in River, which is definitely doable. Certainly got some lane priority with the range versus melee matchup in topside, so that topside River could get a bit scary. It's surprising as well. DFM had like three well two flex picks still open for them with the volley bear and the karma and then they decided to just play it very face up with how we had already called it and it's a little bit surprising in all fairness we also did see that dash's oriana is coming in 
Uh, Oriana with Kennen, with Lee Sin. You've got people who are going to be able to get into the middle, as well as Thresh when he can also throw that off. Oh, yeah. It actually really does help the Hawks a lot more here. Uh, I don't know if we can explicitly say that one of these teams actually won the pick and ban phase. I think we've got two pretty even teams here, relatively speaking. I think part of it will come down to execution. Mm. Yeah, and there's a lot of beef balls on the side of DFM, along with a lot of hard CC, mm. but relatively limited damage. Of course, if that Ezreal that ends up thing. getting behind, you're kind of relying on Karma and Volibear to kind of hope that the squishy members of Hawks uh, can be taken out. And again, it's not like the Hawks have a huge amount of straight tankiness. Uh, Lee Sin and Thresh get some tank item, well, tankish items, you know, Starix Gauge or whatever for the Lee Sin mm. offers something. And Kennen can buy time with Stopwatch and just straight CC, but none of these is like a, a Scion, uh, a Maokai who offer that kind of big beefy ball in the front of it, which uh, DFM have two or three of in the Leona, the Szechuani and the Volibear. Yeah, and that could be the problem, and this is something we have highlighted repeatedly about Detonation Focus Me. They will root routinely do this and draft themselves a one or one and a half damage composition and kind of lean very heavily on their carries to kind of get there. At most, we've got really Cyrus and Utapong as their main two carries. Ebi can definitely overrun yeah, a game, absolutely. but he, has, Force first he, is he has to get something. there though. And that's a big thing. He has to get there. If he gets shut down through Aramic, if Tussle comes in for a gank, shuts him down in pre-6, Ebi's going to just be cannon fodder for the time being. It's going to take him a lot longer to get into this game. As opposed to the side of the Hawks, they have far more kind of snowballing potential through their composition at the moment. They can play through also multiple different players and they can rely and kind of back them up. Oriana's great to either carry or to also back up. Lee Sin's, we've seen Ebi do, well, we've seen Boogie do that several times. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we have. Um, so we, it's not necessarily they have to play straight up. And I, I actually... I actually think I prefer now more the Hawks draft because they because Detonation folks me have done this several times and when it works beautifully for them they could have won with almost a potato salad in all fairness they they were probably going to win the game anyway with whatever they drafted I just uh, I'm a little bit worried a little bit worried for DFM putting your eggs in the Utapon basket and see where that one works though we know that uh mm -hmm. Utapon has been a, probably the most consistent player of DFM across this split would agree and. You know, there are a lot of squishy members on the side of the Hawks. I feel Pooh's Lantern is going to be doing overtime with uh, the Solar Flares and the Glacial Prisons and the Stormbringers coming in on top of a poor Aphelios and Oriana who have no dashes to escape from those. So, you know, definitely room for some backline access for DFM. But I do agree, you know, if that, if that Karma falls behind, if the yeah, Ezreal, more importantly, falls behind, you are going to end up running a little shy on damage. Some yeah. stats on screen, though, which are uh, pretty interesting ones. I'm... Uh, Noting specific, the CS difference for DFM still pretty good considering their lackluster position in the standings. Which is interesting because Honey has the highest CS account out of every single player in the region at 10.2. Really he It's just absurd how high he is in, the, in just the farming department. No one can hold a candle to him. He's like over 0.6 ahead of everybody else in the region. Like, this was a player I highlighted a long time ago. This is a player that's in this game. Could definitely pop off in moments. And we have seen through Super Week moving onwards that Honey could be a point of action. And think about it. They aggressively picked him that first pick of Felios over on the red side. So, that in a Felios we trust and in Honey we trust maybe? Or will Utapon deny it? I guess we've got a matchup in the bot lane initialized now. Yeah, it definitely feels like. That's for sure. There's... I get, there's definitely room for maybe a bit of play around topside as well. You know, there's a lot of CC for but for mm. um, both squads up there. Might want to whether that means they want to teleport down somewhere else is a question to keep in mind. But uh, we're we'll, kind of going to keep our eyes out. Um, but yes, for sure, Aphelios versus Ezreal, especially when that Ezreal is your sole carry. Largely speaking, I kind of have to agree that bot lane feels like a priority for both teams here. So now initialize. We said who we were partially favoured coming into this match. Are you willing to change it or are you doubling down with hesitation like I am? I think I'll still favour DFM, if only because okay. Airbees looked good on Volibear and Utapon's Ezreal has been pretty good. But I am going to wait, I think, 
until I see Third Dragon because I have seen Ezreal <laughs> fight fight around Teardrop Ezreal at Third Dragon so many times. I I get a bit twitchy whenever Second Herald or Third Dragon spawn. So yes. DFM, but like, uh, there's going to be a point about 15 minutes where I feel DFM will be clenching, DFM fans rather, will be clenching their butt cheeks to see whether they fight at the wrong point in time. Squeaky button cheeks, get that five pence piece, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> don't let it get there. <laughs> We we hopefully won't be in squeaky bum territory, but in a, in another sense, that means we've got an exciting games on our hand as we're on the rift. It looks like DFM tried to get a deep ward into Tussle's jungle, and then that was it. That was just the, just the standard deep ward, just to know where he's at. And it's at least in surprise, surprise, he's going to start red side. Uh, I, I mean, you I'm can not see. You can see Kennen as well has managed to get in and drop a he's ward got over spell by book DFM Kennen. blue buff. That's interesting. Yeah, def Definitely becoming more common on this champion, I have to say. Uh, been seeing this more and more often means you can still have some threat and lame with like Ignite and the like when you have to bend your teleport. Definitely been running that way. Plus, uh, cooldown reduction is always nice when you get the cosmic. It's definitely been coming up a little more often. Uh, phase Rush Ariana, nothing super surprising there, I think, overall. No, no, everything else here is pretty stupid. Standard. Uh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm fine with everything that these players have currently got on. Um, nothing. Yeah, the only one that is is that spell book. But even then, that as you've put rightly put, it's not crazy. The fans though believe in DFM, don't they? Uh, they do, and DFM ha is a bit of the SKT, the TSM of this region. Uh, Everybody knows them. Everybody wants to see them win or see them lose. I, depending on which side of the fence you're on. Fan group definitely out. AI bot, pretty damn even, but just edging out towards the Hawks here. Yeah. Thank you, Blitzcrank. Oh, thank, thank you, Blitzcrank. At least Blitzcrank's not biased by any stretch of prior information that has happened before. <laughs> but, I mean, let's be real. We, we were still very hesitant to predict. And if you weren't quite sure, ladies and gentlemen, I was still hedging my bets to double down on the Hawks. But even then, I'm still a little bit hesitant on it. It's not uh, a, so a hard, yes, no, the Hawks are good. It's a, it's a soft, eh, we'll be fine. So far, so good. We're just getting standard clears from both of these junglers. Uh, Steel just did a standard full clear, uh, whereas Tussle is doing that kind of Lee Syndrome uh, slower clear, which he will have at the moment. Looking like, uh, you can see Ebby's actually managed to get a bit of a shove in against Aramic here early on, which is a touch surprising considering the Kennen's ranged advantage here. But of course, with both junglers pathing towards that top side, could leave the volleyball a little overextended. Be curious to see how that one plays out. Bot side, we saw Honey and Pooh hit level 2 and push their advantage as fast as they could. They knew where the jungler started as well, so they are free to do so. Up to a decent-ish CS lead, depending on how the waves get picked up under tower here for you to yeah, there's going to be a few important parts to really pay attention to throughout this. Uh, wow, Aramix being taken super low from Ebby. Ebby's just destroying him. Yeah. All right. It doesn't don't matter. Apparently, disguise better. Don't don't yeah, listen and, to uh, me. No no health no health bars no health bars uh, or no health pots rather available. Uh, is currently looking through what it looks like the minion dematerializes to hold on. But look look look, Ooh. it's DFM time. Behold the dive in topside. Aramix gonna have to try and outplay here. Ebby looking for the thundering smash lands it, but that's a flash into the Sejuani Arctic assault. Stun for the cannon, but first blood goes the way of steel. Flash out from Ebby. Clean dive overall. Yeah, that was really clean by DFM. And I've honestly got a slight problem with, I think, how Aramic played that. He could have waited for Ebby to land the auto attack a little bit longer, stagger it a bit more, and then actually flash it away. Didn't also flash straight into it. Yang's trying to get some information. At least he knows Tussle's trying to steal their jungle. Ooh, nice hook by Pooh there as well. Well buffered for Unipon as well. Just make sure he gets out with the arcane shift, even though it hit. That's kind of one of those ones which you really want to hit as the Ezreal. You're in serious trouble there. Yeah, absolutely. So far, so good. Minor favor, DFM. Oh, oh God. Zenith, Zenith Blade lands. Honey now in a spot of bother, but has got Infernum and Gravitum, so turns it back around on to Gang, but there's health pots available. Steel coming around the back here, looking to see whether he can... Uh, Get in on a gank. I wonder whether he might have been spotted coming through lane. Be curious to see whether that ward in the uh, Krug pit spotted him. But um, he is going to now spot out the ward that was just put down into the river bush. But that will be the end of anything turning up in the bot side. Seeing the first jungle roots here. 
Interesting that Lee Sin went red to blue and then kind yeah. of went right the way back up again. Actually, we're going to see in the mid lane, though, that, that tether landed from the W forces the flash out of Dasher already in this lane. Had a bit of a CS lead, but a little overextended there. Yeah, and he, he had to flash there because he was a great peril. That steel could just flash, knock him up, and actually die very quickly to that Sejuani minor burst that comes out from Sejuani. It's always very suspect. I've been caught out a few times on it. It it's definitely... way bigger than you think, Eddie. Oh, it's <laughs> way far bigger, especially depending on, well, with the with the runes and everything. It, it's just so much more damage. It doesn't matter. Dasho had to flash away, teleport back in, reset, and it's as if nothing ever happened. Oh. Ebby has level 6, he's going in on Aramic, but here is Tussle. Now Ebby in his spot of bother. Level 6 hit for Aramic, but he's just too slow, can't get anything done with a slicing maelstrom. Gets the stun, uh, Tussle going in, but has to dash away. Alt for alt on the top side. Yeah, Tussle also not being 6, but it's going to be a little bit longer, at least a minute and a half till Tussle will hit 6. So not able to try and do any cool tricks to insect his way through. Has to just reset himself and we'll go rack around as we see the... Let's just take a bit of intake and see where we're currently at. Wow, double rings for Ebby in that top lane. Okay, yeah. I think I think we're going to be seeing that Trinity Force. Yeah, it looks like. Uh, of course, we, we know where... Some of that AP scaling comes in on Volibear. We've seen Gunblade Volibears every now and then around the world as a sort of late Ellis, but... Ellis was doing that more than he was doing standard Volibear <laughs> builds, in all fairness. So, I mean, you why can not? Do some fun stuff there. You can do some fun stuff there. First, Dragon did go the way of DFM uh, after kind of gaining some bot lane pressure. Well, that all things said and done, about even across the board. Slight CS lead for the Orianna in mid, but that's about it right now. And this has been what we've seen a few times from DFM. Normally their lead does get a lot bigger, as Honey also gets to put that pink ward just in the brush to also see DFM's pink ward. Important to know for Tussle, as he probably was going to be indexing back round after he gets his red, and then will probably rotate round to blue. So far, DFM minor lead, common stats for them say that, as we've said already in the pregame, they lead the early game. So far, they're doing that. They normally will get first blood. They'll normally get first dragon. They will probably also get first turret. And they probably mm. will also get the first rift herald. That's after 15 minutes, though. And that's why we're a little bit worried. But so far, so good, though, for the side of DFM. Yeah, off to a decent early start. It's in the right places. They got an early dragon as well, which they do like to go towards. Need to see how it continues to uh, stretch on from here. There's room for this to go back in the Hawks' favor. Yet yeah, Oriana plus a Felis is a lot of damage with a cannon flank. We know how those games go. Anybody who's seen uh, Nuggery on that cannon over in the LCK mm. can tell you exactly what a cannon turnaround can look like in the mid game. Steel, though, already starting up this Herald as it spawns. Seros has roamed up with the pressure that they had in mid. And looking to get in and contest this, but with the bot lane roaming up from the Hawks, they decide probably unwise. Gang and Udipon backing out may look to come up and contest themselves, though. Really nicely done, actually, by the Hawks there. Honey and Pooh basically holding each other's hand, running through up the lane. You saw the spam pings coming out from DFM going, they're gone. We, I, They must be coming up and they might be way further because of when they left on Vision. It was so early on, DFM had no idea. They could have been already in the mid lane at that point. So you also saw Cyrus backing off from his wave. They had to go and get that blue buff and... So far, it's kind of safe for DFM, but well played from the Hawks. They're definitely making DFM respect them. Yeah, Steel now at level 6. Gang's roamed up with the reset he came in. Honey and Utapon will be kept in the bot side for now. Steel over to his Krugs. Missing pinks down, but with that control ward in the Herald pit, there's not going to be much chance for a spot here for the Hawks. It looks like it's just going to go over with no contest, actually, from the Hawks early on. No, Steel but gets they, it for free. They did stagger it, which is worth noting. They staggered it. It took them longer for DFM. They wasted more time doing that. And at the moment, the Hawks are just trying to get to that 15-minute mark, right? If they're aware DFM is highly favoured if they can get a snowball going in the 15-minute mark, currently, there's no gold lead. They've been able to basically get it back to a point mm. where it's only, what? A hundred, if that. Sometimes it's a bit more, sometimes it's a bit less. That's negligible to a place where the Hawks are comfortable. And if anyone says scaling's important, you could argue the Hawks outscale DFM's comp. Definitely have a damage edge, that's for sure. I'm gonna wait to see how this one goes. Steel's turned up bot side, but is currently off vision. 
Uh, Russell um, is walking down, though. He's going to be a while. Oh, he's going to Wolves. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it could be a little while. Now, Gang stepping forward. Remember, level six is out here across the board. Solar Flare up for Gang. There is Cleanse on Honey, worth pointing out. So definitely enough room to cancel out the CC. Instead, DFM will wander up into the river and look to regain control of this before the Cloud Drake that will be spawning in just under a minute. Means we're going to be having an RNG map. Mountain Drake will be huge for the Hawks if they're able to get that. A four-stacked Mountain Drake would almost win it. Oh, oh. honey. Utapon getting engaged on here, but the hook goes wide. Teleport now coming in. Tussle's in trouble. He's been flashed on. Shield of Daybreak, and he's just dead. Eviscerated by the bot lane. And now with Seros here as well. DFM will roam up into the into the river with the jungler of the Hawks. Absolutely blown up there with the flash stun from Gang. Yeah, really well played there by the side of Detonation Focus Me as we come into this replay. I actually think it was a really good engage on to hun by Honey here. Leaves it a little bit later than I would have liked, but gets the stun there. Miss of the hook. Tussle's just... What are you doing, Tussle? You're just in no man's land. What are you... Okay. Good CC, uh, good teleport there by Cyrus as he was probably expecting far more of a fight and for Tussle to actually land more of his skill shots. A little bit of flame, but in all fairness, yeah. he just kind of stood there. He came over the ward and was just like, ah, <laughs> oh, I'm dead. All right, good job, oh, gang. You stunned you me. Yeah, Blast Planet over. I mean, uh, partly as well got to save who Poo Flash for the hook. Couldn't find it. Big part uh, of and that. And as a result, Tussle comes over. He's like, right, we're going to come in with this hook landing. And it, it just never landed. And then he was in trouble. Uh, either way, DFM now setting up around this Cloud Drake that spawned. There is still Rift Herald and Infantry uh, for a little while longer. Still about mm, two minutes left on the okay. uh, t on the plate timer but actually the hawks are going to be the ones that start this yeah up. yeah because both teams want to get a triple drake um so basically dfm are going to tell them you, know, you guys take this drake you guys can get the cooldown it's slightly better actually for the hawks to get the cooldown it's going to be a mountain drake really important for both these teams Whoa! that was a clutch lantern i Tussle. believe yeah tussle getting out there with his life it was uh, looking a bit dicey there i feel like that's happened a couple times dfm though with the back timers coming out from the dragon will look to push in mid with this herald spawn and get a few plates for themselves dashes here but dfm managed to glean just about two not quite three. Oh, it's going to be damn close uh there it is oh, comes out it's goes to Cyrus. Oh, Cyrus. Seros is in range for it, so three plates over to the Karma early. Uh, we've been talking about this, but the early spikes for Karma are just so cheap. Looks like she's probably going towards um, the Ludens mm. early on here, but uh, Athenes and Arden Sensor are like 2,100 and 2,300 uh, uh, each. Well, uh, between the two of them, yep. which basically means exceptionally cheap items to get to. So adding the plates in to get to those items earlier sounds pretty nice to me. It really does. And at the moment, DFM are hugely in the favor when it comes to turret plates. They've got one in the top side, three in that mid lane, and then they're trading at the moment one for one in that bot lane. That's a lot of gold. Obviously, we still got to offer a little Ooh, bit. Tussle's being slowed. The Zenith Blade does land. I doubt Tussle's in trouble, but he's managed to get out. Pooh mm -hmm. is now also getting chunked out by the U by Utapon, but the Glacier Press on the top side. Tussle goes down for the second time and the hawks what is going on three kills down in this early game now down three well two thousand gold let's be fair ebby shoving in on the top side finds the shove and the shunt onto aramek the exhaust comes out but out of tower aggro goes ebby and for now this cannon will survive but this blue side invade continues for dfm looking to punish dasher now who's got no flash that's a shockwave but the mantra q does land and that's now looking like a very, very risky place to be, Dasher, who does back away with the command dissonance to escape with a bit of move speed. And all credit, I have to give credit when it's due. Gang, you are playing phenomenally, and it's what a time for you to come online. Oh, Abby's going for him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he is. That is the use of the sc Stormbringer just playing time down onto the turret. But now Aramek has oh! got away out. He escapes <laughs> with a sliver of HP. That flash auto not enough. Teleport comes in and Ebby goes a little deep under turret. Okay, well, he was very lucky that both Dasher and Tussle were there to shield him because if, without both of those shields, he would have definitely died. In all credit you, Ebby, you should have got that kill so many times till Sunday morning, but you are not on Sunday morning. It's a Wednesday morning in Japan. <laughs> So it's not going to be for you today. Well played by the Hawks. And that's the first part of them back. And, uh, initialize. <clears throat> Sir, 
We're at the 15, 15 minutes. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, wait, we've got to see Tussle now in bother. That's the Zenith Blade coming down, but Aramik is here. There is no slicing Maelstrom, though, and that is a very, very low Lee Sin. There is not Glacial Prison available quite yet, but the kick has to be burned from Lee Sin to escape. That's the jungler chunked out as the second Herald spawn, and DFM will work over and look to get this while the jungler is out of action. Important thing to note as well. We're at that halfway mark if you're on a Hawks average game time because they only play for about 29 minutes, whereas the, the Detonation Focus Me, they like going for a lot farther. The AI bot is also predicting heavily that Detonation Focus Me will win, uh, but the AI bot doesn't know that Detonation Focus Me have a problem with the 15 minute power spike markers. <laughs> First turret goes to the Hawks because how long has Honey been just left uh, in this bot lane? So long! Yeah. Well, you saw that Udipon had to back away, knew that top side was going to be the target right now. That's the Slicing Maelstrom down again for a bit. That is the Sky Spitter as well for the shield. Glacial Prison lands, and that is weak side. Aramic showing his head again. Falls down very easily. Now Ebby and Steel will look to take this turret top side. They have Herald in infantry and look to push for maybe more than just the one turret here. I'm really not quite sure why Aramic went back onto him. He didn't need to fight Ebby. He could have easily just cleared the lane in front of him. He knows Ebby's ult's not up for the time. He knows that he should have that timed at the moment. He can't afford to die because he needs to be keeping that top side pressure. Because if he can aggressively push through the top side, this Mountain Drake that's going to be up in 30 seconds is going to be the what the next fight part because both these teams need this if the nation folks me get three drakes the hawks is chance it doesn't matter how much damage you have if they're all just fight they're just three times levels more tankier than you'll ever be especially with a leona and everything Same else body volley back yeah, yeah that's yeah. A, that's a lot of tankiness yeah but if the hawks can get it that just means obviously thresh is going to be 10 times tankier than he should be Dash is going to be far more difficult to deal with because Oriana's already can be annoying to deal with the, those shields, especially when you have build cooldown. Tussle and Aramik also, it just it really helps the Hawks line up. At the moment, it's going to be slightly DFM favoured. Ooh. Dasher just getting away from the Zenith Blade right there. There is Herald in Infantry for Steel, and we know how this works around Third Drake. You spawn that Herald in mid lane, look to buy yourself time. But instead, actually, DFM just going to walk on over and start this Drake up with Herald in Infantry. Don't want to use it to buy priority. Well, there's a level instead advantage. Instead, have Ebby look... To, well, look at this. It's a massive level advantage. And honestly, with Ebby there sitting in front going, yeah, I dare you to come on through here. Uh, Drake goes down, and now DFM will rotate with the Solar Flare onto Dude. Pooh. He goes golden, but now he's in a spot of bother. That forces the cleanse out of Honey with the Glacial Prison, but that is a dead Thresh before Honey can get in. But he landed back over. He's going to try and turn it around with the Severum Moonlight Idol. Aramic gets slowed down with a well-timed Q what are you from doing? Zeros, and he gets rooted in place. And maybe that shout from my color commentator asks a little bit of the Hawks in general. Hawks, what were you doing there? I, In all fairness... Honey played that as well as you possibly could on Onophelios. He limit tests and knows this champion. He trusted that lantern because he was going to be under his turret. He still had his flash up as well. He already cleansed. He used as much. But this is beautiful. As you call that a... Yeah, continue, man. No, no, as you already covered, Ebby is just a bear that you can't even face. Blind, Blind. gang! This Blind. is so good. And <laughs> gang's having a phenomenal performance. Look Ooh. at this. Cleanses away sees it and goes well i can get out of here won't die to it in all oh. fairness credit and credit whoa what the what happened ebby uh found a kill by the looks of it um uh, that might have been on to poo earlier though i'll put that right out no that, uh, but uh, died to a gank in top side uh, yeah it looks like uh, yeah, it was one two and two it was zero one and two before that drive away i guess he found the kill on to poo in that last fight but dies for a second time clearly pushed up in a lane he probably didn't have any right to be in gang has now found tussle but that is the eclipse shield of eclipse down trying to find space avoids oh, the hook poo. good sidestep that's, that's a, an unfortunate one to miss that's the second one that might have led to a kill especially with uh with tussle around in all fairness though gang has used so much pressure to basically deny tussle a lot of spots into fights he's actually basically the front line that the team can't quite rely fully upon but now steals hit 11 Ebby's hit 12, Cirrus is 12, DFM's comp is now coming online and it's going to take a while longer now for the Hawks to do it. Honey's though is trying his absolute best and he's going to get another turret for them. Two turrets to one in favour of the Hawks. Now that Rift Herald will be summoned mid and Oriana be damned. You can't wave clear against a Herald charging at your turret. It falls down. Mid lane is broken. 
is a pretty big deal. You are right, though. Honey and Pooh will do their very best to trade back in the top side. It will get Honey to his second item spike, namely that Hurricane. On the other side, though, Ezreal, knowing he is a main source of damage for this squad, has gone for the Trinity Force as well. So it will be Trinity Force Mana Mune. Not transformed into Muramana as yet, but uh, certainly off to a decent start as this Ezreal at 101. Honey, though, will try and contest, as we've said. Looking pretty okay on this Aphelios thus far. I think he's currently probably performed the best out of a lot of the members of his team. He's rarely getting caught out. He's limit testing the side of DFM and he's outputting a majority of their damage at the moment. At the time being, though, Aramik is struggling in this top lane, especially against Ebi and his volley bear. And Tussle just isn't having the performance we were hoping for. However, we're at that 20 minute mark. Is the game going to be over in nine minutes or are we going to play a little bit longer of a game? Well, Glacier Prison lands onto Pooh, taken very low, but Tussle will buy time keeping Saros away. So, uh, alt there, burn for not a lot gained on the side of DFM, but they will get Scuttle Crab which uh, is that undeniable vision, and maybe if the Hawks were looking for a cheeky Baron, that's not going to happen. Ebi will claim the third turret for DFM down on the spot side and extend their gold lead to about 3,000 here. Yeah, a little bit confused why all of the members of, D of the Hawks were just on one side, and they weren't trying to do much. You're not going to get the Baron. Like, Steel's there. You're not going to get it. He's got a level advantage. You can't steal it without him knowing. He's got a smite advantage over you. You also don't have mid lane pressure. So that's another part of you. Until you can get this mid lane turret down, it's kind of irrelevant. You've got top, you've got bot. Now you need to siege this mid. I'm not sure why all four members didn't just try and brute force siege mid. That might have made more sense. Currently, DFM are running away with this game. Exa exa eh, little, outside of Dasher, who is several levels ahead. And in all fairness, the money is currently in Dasha and Honey Sense. If they're going to play, they need to play through these two gentlemen because currently Tussle and Alomik are lacking in the funds department as well as slightly in the level department. Yeah, push a little bit. But of course, Dasha has not gone for that Luden's Death Cat build or Luden's Oblivion or build you can see on Aria. has gone towards the Archangels into the Spellbinder build, mm. which is a lot of movement speed, a lot of shielding. It is, of course, a Saros Embrace now. Uh, so that's a means maybe he can survive the burst that DFM will look to put out on this Oriana. Can do the very best to put out a fair amount of work on the shockwaves if she can land them as well. Gonna try and get a bit of a shove in mid lane and look to contest around this third dra- or rather uh, it would be third Drake for DFM, but wait, they get a hook onto Steel, who's taken very low, but that's a Karma Shield. That says one, he taken so low, flashes out, has survived. Oh. Now the Solar Flare is avoided with the Lantern, and Steel will need to try and heal up, try and survive. Dasher looking for the Shockwave, only finds Gang. Flash away from the Flay, that is a flash out of this is the a 4v5. From but wait, it is a 4v5, but Yutabon in the backside has found a double. The bot lane is dying alongside <laughs> the Kennen, but Ebi coming steaming in this bear is a very very fast one the storm bringer is here and the storm wreaks havoc on the hawks who fall down it is a clean ace for dfm who say screw the mounted rate we want baron the hawks just lost a 4v5 fight when they got complete choice when to go at it eddie was so much of their tankiness but it doesn't matter because gang and steel can just tank for days karma doesn't give up Damn about what you say, <laughs> because Utapon oh. doesn't get touched once through this. What a flash! Look at this. So much Utapon damage goes onto this. Then Siros basically says that's nice. Does the shield there just in case of anything? The Hawks, why are you engaging on them or going for the Drake? Why are you just going up? Sh good shockwave there. Who missed that? And that was great. Utapong had to flash. Worth doing. And then just watch what happens here. One goes down. Utapong just gets to go forward aggressively, marching forward. And look at Ebi running like an absolute madman. Tussle's already dead. I, I know he's gone there. And then look at this ultimate. It's beautiful as Tussle goes into it. It's... You know what? Yeah. That was nice, well played. Nice, and uh, nice behold, job. two items on Ezreal, but the dragon fight now being started. Steel is here. That is the, the oh glacial prison God. onto Honey, who takes a true shot barrage as well. Tussle gets in onto Ebi and gets Jack all. That is a slicing burst from the backline, but it doesn't get enough. The shockwave buys time, but two are dead already. Steel stepping forward, finds the permafrost, but not quite enough. But it's still a double. Nebby stepping forward now onto Honey, who's got no cleanse left, got no health left, as it's a triple kill onto Utapon 7, 0, and 4 in Utapon DFA. 
FM Trust, and he is delivering on this, Ezreal. Well, we had questions about all of this, and we did highlight the bot laners might be how this game has to go, and in Utapon we trust, and I asked you, Initialize, are we going to, uh, only about four, uh, five minutes ago, are we going to be having a 29-minute game? With the pace that Detonation Focus Me are playing at, it could be on the cards. At least one thing of the Hawks will stay true, and that will be their average game time. Both squads in this game were looking for redemption. Hawks after their shocking spring split. DFM after their shocking summer split thus far. DFM looking like they might be the ones coming out on top here, and we'll go through this replay one more time. Look at this Look, uh, engagement. So what? Steel lands it into this, into the Ezreal coming through. Gang's right in the middle of it. Doesn't care about anything that the Hawks have to offer. Aramix just, I don't know why he's there now. Uh, Pooh's dead, and we all, and we know that Honey just uh, sadly dies, even though, in all credit to him, he tried his absolute dandest to try and output as much damage as he could truly possibly can problem is when the rest of his team's dead and uh the enemy team's in uh 97 percent according to blitzcrank um well we now got a 10k gold lead uh now i want to see if anyone can get a 100 cs advantage now over somebody else that, that, that <laughs> the flame horizon can we get it or not uh where, where's the Unlikely. lens we need to watch? Uh, pretty hard maybe oriana maybe oriana can find it at some point but it's pretty hard oh my well, yeah, there you have it. It's not looking like a complete support karma here. Look at it's this! Be I said, honey! I told you, Ooh. Initialize. I told you he was trying. He's trying, but Ezreal was trying a little harder there. The 2,000 yeah. additional damage. And look at that volley bet. Yeah. Good lord. But we, we can basically chalk it down to 10k versus 5k, and that's double. That's that's just double. Uh, yeah. Sage well. Steel's not meant to be putting out damage. He's just meant to be initiating fights. Cyrus mm. is doing more damage. And again, Gang and Pooh, they're not meant to be putting out much damage. So it doesn't really matter. As DFM are looking to siege onto the side of the Hawks. I'm not sure how much you have left in the tank. But the AI bot gave you 3%. And you should take all of that money that you possibly can. Because this is DFM. This is playoffs DFM initialized. It's it's eleven thousand gold. It's three items plus a QSS on Ezreal. It's three items, including a righteous glory on the fastest bear in the West, or rather perhaps the East here, looking to run down your fellow special prison goes. Why the Epic doesn't seem to care? He goes in looking and decides, yeah, that might have been a mistake and turns straight back around. They have cracked all the inner turrets now, have though DFM as a Mantra Q lands onto the Hawks, and uh, that Karma with the Ludens and uh, two alongside another item and a half, definitely stinging at this point in the game. Hawks need to hold on, they need to stall, they need to try and stop a Mountain Soul that would make Leona even more ridiculously tanky. I mean, but, th that uh, Mountain Soul basically is the nail in the coffin, regardless of how you look at this game. I said the Mountain Soul would be basically the win or loss. If the Hawks could get it, it basically prevents DFM from really pushing aggressively. If DFM get it, well, it's right. just all over. And, uh, well, Ebby just doesn't care anymore, does he? He's just, just schooling on them. He's just jumping around and just being a big bear. Well, Baron has fallen off, and Ebby thought, well, there's not much else here on the map to make, fight for. Maybe we can catch Dasher out of position for something out there. Volley Barrel already third of the way done. Not going to be uh, at any risk of being down for any major feet fight. So, Gas was looking for something there. Didn't find it. Uh, but <laughs> made the tower stop for a moment, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. At least he gets to go, well, I remember when Omrecker was in this game, because in all credit, Ebby has been playing for such a long time, he could have brought Omrecker in, I believe, the first oh, few man. seasons he was around, as he well as been. to Cyrus and Utapon, who, outside of Faker, have the longest standing uh, tenureship on tenure. a team, right? Mm. They do, yeah. Faker has the longest tenure on a single organization within LOL. That will be, of course, with SKT, now T1. Second, though, is joint between Utapon and Seros, who, uh... They're just waiting for Faker to retire. Well. They're both of them are just, like, watching and going, well, we're gonna wait for that technicality, and then Faker can hold it in the victory, in the in the record Outlasting. books, and then yeah. we'll take it, and Outlasting then we'll take the it. Outlasting the GOAT is a brave move. Okay. I mean, <laughs> these are two players who are trying to out, 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 do it against the GOAT, and, I mean, Cyrus is the Emperor in Japan, so... Yeah, that's what he's, what he's nicknamed out there. For now, though, it's still looking like DFM's game to lose. They're up that 10,000 gold mark. 
Baron spawns in 10 seconds. It's looking like that's what they need to break through. For all that the Hawks are in Ten, a bad position, they nine, certainly have wave eight, clear. 7, 6, 5, live. 4, 3, 2, 1. The Hawks just had a 30-minute game initialized. What's going Yay. on? Wee. Who knows? Ugh. All right. The Hawks, they're looking to find Ebby in the side lane. The Thundering Smash comes out. They get a slow. They're going to try and find something. Actually, Ebby just turning it around, throwing down as much damage as can. The Sky Splitter coming out to buy time. That is the Seraph's shield. The ult of DFM the Wolf. Are doing they Baron. get a shockwave back, but the DFM are doing Baron. Flash for the Blast Bat, and Ebby's still out. Dasher chasing, trying to find something more. There is still a Sky Splitter that could still come out. Shock Waves have been now been burned. Stun comes in. Sky Spider coming down. The healing. But wait, Tussle over the back goes down. And Ebby is wait, still, he's still alive. He's still down. They finally have to flash from Aramek to kill him off. It will be a one for one trade, but a lot burned by the Hawks to get a hold of the efm's top laner they'll give up a mountain drake and that will stop mountain soul it is a win for the hawks in some regards but they have got to get back to base before it falls because <laughs> dfm have a wave and they're shoving in ebby respawns in 30 tussles back in about 10 himself but it'll be a little late before that because dfm have already broken in here looking for the inhibitor now got to be careful they're looking to try and stop the inhibitor going down and actually with that infernum severum combo honey is a force to be reckoned with at three and a half items so they will save the inhibitor for now dfm will look for a reset before looking to shove back in with the two minutes remaining on the back yeah, those items coming in very clutch for Honey. He's probably got the most gold on the side of the Hawks, as well as trying his absolute hardest. Currently sitting at 1-2 at the moment. Has more fun than you, Topon, and all credit to him. And let's get to have a look at what we saw here. We only know Tussle does fall. So the side of DFM, they're getting this... Damn, they're getting Jaren, Baron down really quickly, even though this is an everything. Oh my god, what? what? Okay, he, he was just deleted. Yuzbon is very, very strong on Ezreal, is what we saw there. They did finally get Ebi, but uh, in the two versus one, with all ultimates and all flashes burned, they only just managed to bring down the bear. And it got a bit close for comfort. I almost wonder if Ebi had you spent all his money and then got that Baron buff. I think he actually wins that 2v1, which is just horrifying to mm, think possible. about. Oh. All right, you can see Ebby shoving in the top side. Steel is ushering in the wave in the bot. The Hawks, though, are looking to try and get onto Ebby, but he spots the squad of the Hawks, and that means it is a free shove into the bot lane inhibitor tower for DFM, because they know exactly where the Hawks are off that foresight ward, and that is an ult onto Aramek, who's dead to right, gets shut down by that Ezreal, cleaving across the cannon for his ninth kill this game. Ebby will get onto the inhibitor in the top side. The zoom out from the observers because they know the siege continues. Bot lane inhibitor falls and DFM have that one down. Now the volley bear looking to be kind of corralled around a little bit here, but that is... But Cirrus has just been forward. left alone. He is and it's a little bit of chunk now onto the Nexus turrets. Hawks need to come over and probably deal with this wave as Ebby rotates back into that top lane inhibitor. Steel ushering in another wave in mid. Gang kind of hovering between various people. Top lane inhibitor falls as well. And Hawks, when are you going to pull the trigger? When are you going to do something? It's a 5v4. Ebby's going in. The storm is here. Sarah's flashing in for the root onto Dasher. Shockwave comes down on Ebby. He goes down. <gasps> that Blanton out was massive. But now Tussle in trouble. The Crescendum. Chakrams are buying a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> and Honey has got himself stacks and finds himself a couple kills. They're going to try and teleport in behind and try and get in on to DFM, who now trying to retreat. Hawks aren't done in this game. It is a three versus five. Aramic not here right now. He's got the ball. Apologies. He is here. Teleported in. It was that is a massive blow to Prince, but the Zenith Blade misses, and the DFM managed to disengage the attempted teleport flank. He didn't have his flash up, so he was fully all in on just running into the face of Detonation Focus Me. DFM knew that as they probably had the timers done, so they were denied mm. fully. And you asked the question, the Hawks, when are you going to pull the trigger? Well, actually, they don't get a chance to pull the trigger as Ebby and Steel are going to decide that for them. Honey, though, comes in the six stupid amount Listen. of damage onto this. Then onto Steel immediately, and that, oh my god, that lantern, as you called it, was beautiful. Cyros then gets just, oh my god. It's the oh, yeah. Crescendum Calibrum with all the stacks and the turret got Seros marked. It meant the auto was available. Teleport was uh, bold from the Hawks. It doesn't work out in the end. And that is a good Glacial Prison 
stop the engage. It was snap decision, Glacial Prism, and credit to Steel here, who has been having an absolutely insane game, as well as Utapon, who is currently 9-0-4. It was a brilliant early game from Gang, who prevented Tussle from doing any early ganks into the bot lane. Utapon was then able to capitalize on that. Steel was aggressively around this jungle. Ebi is just such a, a nuisance for the Hawks to deal with. It's okay if he dies once or twice, because he's pulling so much pressure. The amount that we already witnessed, which was two members of the Hawks that they had to spend to deal with him, and they keep pushing. Two inhibitors down. That mid in, uh, that mid turret is very dangerously low, and one more inhibitor down could prevent it. Mountain Drake's going to be up in 25 seconds. Baron up in a minute and initialize. How much longer can the Hawks hold on? Can they well. still hold on? They just picked up Death Cap on Orianna. Huge. There is a world now where the Orianna and the Aphelios can turn around a fight they did in the last one. Yeah, there was a little bit of luck getting that last Sentinel mark onto Seros to get the kill. But it's definitely a world where they can blow people up. There's only so tanky you can get, and it feels like Aphelios, with a couple hundred years, can definitely blow up uh, people b b within Hawks? that time frame. What the Hawks? What are you now doing, Hawks? They are getting vision control around Baron, I guess, trying to buy some time there. They don't think they can contest, but it's mounting soul onto DFM. More for the Hawks to try and burn through. It's a third mountain dragon to stack onto the tankiness of dfm who are now shoving in mid lane looking to get this one pushed up and in as the draft baron rather will spawn in 15 seconds as i speak not they... much health left on this tower does survive for now honey severum infernum great wave clear but a bit short range ebby shoving in the bots i get in the way just in. pushing in looking to maybe shut down this turret steal in the front line buying time steps up is not afraid right now last turret before the nexus falls mid lane inhibitor is up but it is exposed i'm really confused on what the hawks are thinking here they needed to at least try and contest that dragon uh, because at least they, they can at least say they fought over something now that they got this baron and what what is that vision doing for them now oh well done we know that dfm are doing dragon Good, guys let's be real you already knew it because of the timer they just aggressively took the dragon pushed up mid got the mid in uh, in well, they're and steal in tussle going being jumped on has survived for now has gone golden now dfm needs to see whether they can kill the jungler he's still alive that shockwave <laughs> His time and Dasher gets out with the true shot barrage. Still hits, but the shield from safeguard keeps Tussle alive. Oh, Maybe going forward with a righteous glory. He's looking for that final knock on the Stormbringer. Gets the kill onto the jungle. He said it is a five versus four. Poo now very low and in the five versus four. Who needs Baron? DFM now looking for the mid lane inhibitor. Might be looking for the end with the man advantage they have. Honey and Dasher are alive, but there is no shockwave. It's not on a huge cooldown. It's down by half already. Bot lane inhibitor respawns. Top lane will be up in 20 seconds dfm shoving in nexus turrets are the goal here they don't care about baron they care about the game aramic looking to find something he goes in with a slicing maelstrom on two three make that nearly for the hook onto gang but that's only onto the leona who's damn tanky goes in flashes out nexus turret number one falls crescendum is out for honey alongside infernum but one nexus turret falls and the squad of dfm have to pull back with two inhibitors down and one nexus turret remaining they will retreat to the Baron, knowing Tussle is still dead. But now respawning, they think they can burst it down, and they'll do it Look all at the regen. over again. Look at the regen that's onto multiple members of the side mm -hmm. of DFM. Ebby is going to be recalling back, but he's already got so much of his health already back. And if he wants to spend money, he can. No, he's just going to stand there. Look at Tussle. He's just zoning him already, and the, the teleport's coming right, in. Teleport's coming out. They need to get here and get this down. Tussle going to try and steal it. Can he get in is the question. <gasps> Oriana steals it with the shockwave. That is a huge coup for the Hawks. What a move by Dasher to save the game. But is it going to be enough? Uh, Hawks is going to be able to retreat, and they get out with four members after stealing the Baron buff. How much damage was done by the shockwave? It is a lot of damage on to the Oriana at this point again. Actually, wait, DFM teleporting in. They want to try and end still. They want to contest. It is a 4v5. Aramic is not here. They're going to try and push in against the Baron. It's one Nexus turret remaining against 
Two waves of supers, DFM are here. That is a shockwave, brother. Glacial prison that misses. Low. Honey has to flash out. Has got crescendo and grip out. Grabs him. Not the best team fight combo. He needs to burn through this ammo fast as he can. And be trying to get out. But this Nexus turret just gets absolutely eviscerated. He does nothing. Now the Nexus exposed. That is the Calibrum. Moonlight Vigil. Pooh does not hit the hook. And DFM win the tiebreaker. But Hawks made him sweat for it at the end. They made them absolutely sweat for it. They even took away that Baron buff. But but it was not to be of everything as Detonation Focus Me take it away from them. We're gonna go on a very momentary break here over the uh, yeah, officially unofficial just so we <laughs> can calibrate our thoughts so we can come you back for a, a Brit of analysis because absolutely, you definitely need a breath initialize and I would, uh, <laughs> I'd definitely like to go for a bit of a drink through my squealing that I've done. So we'll be back in a <laughs> only a moment, everybody. Hello, hello everybody, welcome back to the desk for the LGL official unofficial coverage of the LGL 2020 Summer Split tiebreaker match featuring Destination Focus Me and the Fukuoka Soft Bank Hawks Gaming. We just, well, more initialized, had half lost his breath halfway through that with the amount of team fighting <laughs> and how much went on. I'm your host, Colorcaster, Alex Lewis, and actually co host, initialize, uh, color play by play caster. Wow, we just witnessed, um, I'm gonna, I'm happy to say this, a bit of a slaughter to a degree from Destination Focus Me. Yes, we wondered where DFM would be after week seven. We were hoping mm. that we would get their, the form we'd been seeing from them in week seven, but we weren't sure. This felt pretty good for DFM for most of the game. It really did. Let's talk about that early game because part of it has to do around the man that we've been a little bit concerned about his performance through recent, but he's back on form. Week 7 showed he was on form and that's Ebby in the top lane initialize. Yeah, the early lane Kennen versus Volibear, you would expect potentially the Kennen to come ahead there. It's range oh, versus yeah. melee. Volibear, of course, is just really bloody obnoxious, can run at you and stun you and all that kind of jazz, so that can sometimes get a bit complicated. And it got complicated, because the Kennen ended up at half HP, no pots, and then you are facing a Volibear and a Sejuani with all the CC in the world to yep. take down an all-too-squishy Kennen under that tower for first blood. Yeah, and then they got that first blood. In response, the Hawks tried to go for a sneaky play onto Utapon. Honey initiated with the ultimate from Aphelios. It, well, with the Gravitum ultimate as well, actually. Perfect mm. one to go for, um, but then Tussle was caught out and it wasn't meant to be initialized. No, it was not. By that point, you saw that Tussle, had, oh, sorry, Steel had managed to recall was around as well, yeah, and that's the Gravitum ult lands, Utapon manages to arcane shift away, and gang, I have to give him credit here, so steps good. to the left, prevents the easy hook option for Pooh, who just flashed for a death sentence, and he, and he has it. to try and, like, 
Well, he has to try and arc it past the Leona and hits nobody, at which point Tossel, who's ready to come in for a fight, blast cones over the wall and Leona goes yoink on a stein, turning it around, lands the solar flare, lands the zenith blade, and the Lee Sin dies in an instant. And frankly, Tussle spent a lot of time getting Leona ulted that game. Yeah, a lot of time it went around. The rest of the map was basically from there was DFM's control. We hit that 15 minute mark and the game had slowed down significantly. The Hawks had actually come to a gold even place where they had lost first blood. They'd given two kills over and DFM had actually got a dragon advantage. Uh, as well as the Hawks had also been given another dragon because they were told you need to take a dragon because we don't we want a three <laughs> stack. Both of us want a three stack. So come on, be a bro. Fair, fair, fair. Which makes sense. Uh, but through that, it didn't matter as the Hawks just weren't able to quite keep up. And a few of the team fights that happened just never went in their favor. And let's talk about dragon number three, because that's when Ebby, I, I, if I'm remembering everything right, that's when Ebby would just got to AFK push and the Hawks decided to fight a 4v5. Ah, uh, yes, the 4v5 where you end up with three people getting hit by a solar flare after the glacial prison lands into the true shot barrage from Ezreal. So Your good. front line disappears. Oh, no, it was Drake uh, 4. Which... It was Drake 4 because the Hawks had taken uh, one. Course, My yes, apologies. Yeah. Yeah. Third, it would have been the third stack for DS. Yes, DFM. So, uh, yeah. I, I understand the context. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and, and at this point, Utapon has already picked up a number of kills. Like, he is very, very strong on this Ezreal. And uh, Ebi had just backed, picked himself up a Righteous Glory. Homegord teleports in with the Righteous Glory active as well. And I have never seen a faster bear in my life. Sonic I've only uh, seen horses clearly has faster. been hitting the gym. I've only uh, seen uh, uh, <laughs> horses and a Ramus faster. Whatever Ramus is. I don't want to uh, pretend, pretend yeah. I know that. And we were a little bit worried that DFM might lack damage, but Volibear do isn't exactly shy on damage if he can get to the right point in the game. Had picked up Black Cleaver first. Gets to dive in with this ungodly strong Ezreal following so him up good. as well. And it is a clean ace for DFM that brings him from 5-2 to two to 10-2. to two. Yep. Uh, And game at that point is feeling increasingly out of the Hawks. Yeah, absolutely. And Steel was all over the place. In all fairness, he secured a lot of the pressure. He was their early game pressure, but then it, when it turned into mid to late game, he was their initiation on top of Gang's Leona. This is what they had. They had a beautiful initiation. Ebby was able to go for more of aggressive start to play on this volley bear. We saw that early black cleaver coming in, and it was definitely important for them. And Utapon, let's let, let's say this. I was concerned that DFM weren't going to have the damage. In Utapon, we trust, and I was wrong. Yeah, I think we know how good this guy can be. We know how good Gang can be. DFM in general have felt a little bit out of sorts post that 15 minute mark. They looked significantly more put together. They looked mm, threatening. They, really they looked decisive more than anything. Blind solar flares across walls. Uh, that kind of thing is something we haven't seen from DFM in a while. There's been some serious disconnect, frankly, between the engage and follow up of DFM in recent weeks. Not so today, not so in week seven. And uh, they look pretty damn good. In all credit, before we do end the cast, let's give a little bit of praise over to the Hawks. And I want to mm. highlight um, especially their mid laner and their bot laner, who really did try and keep it on their place. First, let's talk about Honey. Because let's be real, yeah. Honey was trying so hard throughout a lot of this game. And, and, and was dealing third most damage. Well, sec second? No, second most damage in the game at Impressive points. Impressive work. On this like Aphelios. Yeah, he hit three and a half, nearly, he hit three and a half, and then he hit four items. Uh, Oriana did the same, and there was a concern. Yeah, Dasha. When DFM pushed to end with the the man advantage, and Honey got Calibrum Crescendum, having just run out of Infernum in a fight. Mm. And he gets to kill one, get a lantern out to safety, get the mark from the Sentinel turret to finish off the Karma who was trying to retreat with a full stack of Chakram surrounding him, you thought, okay, there is a world where we go two centuries into the future and Aphelios um, <laughs> runs over this game. Uh, and, you know, with there was that threat and you have to give some credit to Hawks for holding onto their base for a little longer than we thought it was going to happen. Oh, absolutely. I think they did. And that does mean, well... 
DFM are going to be our fourth seed. Now, gentlemen, mm-hmm. as you, uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be able to see, I was more meaning gentleman to uh, to initialize. Um, <laughs> ladies <Thanks>. and gentlemen, <laughs> uh, we, as you can now see on screen, we currently have the current standings. And let's do a quick roundup uh, for anyone that's not quite sure or tuning in for the first time for the LGL Officially Unofficial. We do a staggered way of doing it, or I like to call it a staggered way of doing it. I I like the term at the moment, staggered. Can you tell? Um, no, I've not never heard that term. Never before. heard it before. Um, so round one will only be our bottom four teams. That is going to be CGA and mm-hmm. DFM will be facing off against either the Fukuoka Sopang Hawks or Burning Core. CJ will get to pick first and DFM will be left with the others, but important to note, they will have side selection throughout these mm-hmm. match up. Important to note, DFM decided to go blue side versus the Hawks as they did have side selection. So good to know. And uh, that will be on the 16th will be those matches on mm. the Sunday. Um, most Always time. Uh, we will be talking about it. If you are interested in finding out about our own English coverage, check out our Discord link is down below. No as well as the Twitter, as we will be keeping up to date. We're still working a few things out over on our side, as we have got a week off, thankfully, before we do that. Following on that, we will have round two on the 22nd of August, which will have V3 facing off against Sengoku Gaming, and that's going to be a big match, because that's the gauntlet match. Yeah, Yeah, paint the scene. yeah, and the thing with round two, of course, is like the the guys who came first and second, V3 and Sengoku Gaming, have got that extra life. They get that winner's bracket, and mm. whoever wins that round two match between those two gets to go straight to the finals. Loser, though, isn't out. They get they move to round three, that kind of semi-final berth, and uh, get to fight off against the the best of the rest, the who wins out of the bottom four squads and fights their way up to the semi-final. Yeah, and that's also a really important one, as obviously if CGA or DFM, regardless of who they will, they will have that side selection. If CGA win, they'll have side selection versus everybody else. So getting these higher Mm. seeds are really important. And then moving forward over to the 5th of September will be round three, and followed by the 6th will be the LJL finals. Um, I can already guarantee and announce happily here that we will be covering round three and round four live over on this channel. So if you are interested, follow us down below. There is a good chance we will be hopefully doing round one and two stuff semi-live, but... We're, I'm holding off announcing anything until <laughs> things are confirmed in people's calendars and everyone is happy to do stuff. As uh, It is very early in the morning as we are to English casters. Welcome back to the desk, everybody. But with that said, I'm more than happy to end this out. Initialize, I would like to get any closing thoughts for you, especially as you are our resident DFM uh, aficionado. Like I can finally let slip a little bit of yes. Got some return to four. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the, the DFM family is happy. The analysts also pretty pleased, frankly. It, we, it was sad to see such a fall from grace. We were hoping with the way the sp- summer split was starting, we'd have four top teams. For a long mm. time, it was looking like we'd only have the three. Uh, now, I actually, I think the playoffs should be pretty competitive. We've seen good things out of Burning Core and Hawks as well. We know what CGA can do. And uh, Sengaku and V3, well, reason they're up in first and second. They are absolutely some of the best, and we wouldn't be happier than ever as the as the LGL look more competitive than ever. For myself, Initialize, and Nymera somewhere in the world, thank you so much for watching. Check out our podcast, and we'll be back very, very soon. Oh, please, no, I need some more sleep. <laughs>